Hello, and welcome to Quick Thoughts. So, I'm pretty sure that everyone who's watching this video has heard of writer Gen Urobuchi. If you don't know, he's the guy behind such revered works like, oh, I don't know, Madoka Magica, Fate Zero, Psychopaths, Bargantia, and the Virtuous Planet, or however the heck you pronounce that, and in July, his new anime will be Aldona Zero. If you haven't heard of any of these shows, what rock have you been living under for the past few years? Anyway, the general reception of Mr. Urobuchi is that he's a pretty brilliant writer with creative ideas and concepts that he incorporates into his works. As for me, well, I think he's okay, I guess? I suppose I'll have to elaborate, so here you go. Today's topic is my opinion of Gen Urobuchi. Keep an eye out for spoilers. Just to be perfectly clear, I don't hate Gen Urobuchi. In fact, I don't even dislike him. I appreciate his new ideas that try to break new boundaries, and how most of his works stand out among the myriad of anime blandness that are released to the public nowadays. However, just because something is creative and unique doesn't necessarily translate well into what I consider quality. Oh, don't get me wrong, when he hits it out of the park, the ball flies to the moon. But when he messes up, that very same ball rebounds off the moon and hits him square in the face. I believe that the man has talent but isn't always the greatest at executing his ideas and relies too much on pretentious dialogue in the majority of his shows. To showcase what I mean by this, I'm going to take a look at his works and analyze exactly what he does correctly and what he doesn't. Let's begin with Fate Zero, which happens to be my favorite Ganorobuchi anime. Some might call me biased as I am a history fantasy battle royale nut, and seeing them all combined is like the greatest thing ever for me, but allow me to explain why I like this series as much as I do. It's because the show is essentially fanfiction. Fate Zero originated as a series of light novels written as a prequel to the Fate Stay Night visual novel, produced by Type Moon. In other words, Fate Zero is based off of an already existing world and characters. I'm not saying fanfiction is a bad concept by any stretch of the word, but my point still stands. Granted, what makes Fate Zero so good is how it expanded upon that already existing world, and helps you learn how the events of Fate Stay Night came into place. It elaborated on characters such as Saber, Kiritsugu, Gilgamesh, and Kirei, adding additional depth and even personality to them by providing more backstory and development. As for the new characters, they're also rather memorable. The best new characters were without a doubt Waver and Ryder, whose friendship and development was probably my favorite part of the entire show. So, now let's look at themes. We have the themes of morality, sacrifice, truth, honor, justice, and leadership. Does the story follow through on these themes? Well, yes it does. The anime does a great job of showing how each theme impacts the story direction or the decision of a character, and in the end the themes do follow through. When Kiritsugu rescued Shiro from the fire, it showed us that even those who have fallen into despair due to the sacrifices they make could still find happiness and morality in saving another. When we see Kirei, the opposite applies. He finds happiness in the despair of others, and is angrier at the sacrifices than he is sad. I suppose some might argue that this is black and white psychology and there should be more of a gray area, and while I do agree to some extent, I believe that was kind of the point. I believe Fate Zero to be the story of Kiritsugu finding salvation despite all the terrible actions he committed, and how he was able to find it through rescuing Shiro in the very end of the anime. Kirei fails to understand the concepts of morality and justice because he's psychotic, and his vision of the world is warped due to his violent tendencies. His character began the anime feeling like he had no place in the world, but Archer helps Kirei realize that he is, for lack of a better term, an evil person who was just born that way and can't be fixed. He is practically the devil incarnate, to put it simply. So the black and white psychology really works in these characters' favor to assist their developments. In the end, I believe Fate Zero is fantastic, and the strongest of Urobuchi's works. If I had to criticize the show, it's the typical pretentious and overlong dialogues that take place every now and then, but unlike others, the dialogue helps develop the characters and flesh them out. It's the overblown nature that makes them boring at points, though. Next, there's Madoka Magica. This is where we go from insanely good to kind of meh. I believe Madoka Magica to be above average, but it is also where a lot of Urobuchi's technique falls flat. 
The original show was just a mess of ideas that could have been incorporated into a story to create a flowing narrative, but due to a 12 episode length there wasn't nearly enough time to elaborate or even flesh out any of these ideas. The characters, while not bad, are pretty one dimensional in the long run. I suppose one could argue that this improves the characters in a sense, because a good majority of the characters do develop in accordance to their singular trait. For example, Sayaka is a person that believes in justice, but she is ultimately consumed by it and loses sight of who she is. This does highlight some of the themes of the story, but considering everything else that is going on at the moment, it's shrouded due to the insane amount of everything else. I've heard people complain that Madoka's decision to become a magical girl took too long. And I have to agree, Madoka's probably the biggest victim of being one dimensional in the entire show, and due to this I couldn't get invested into her character enough to care about what was really happening. So while the characters that contribute to theme, their potential depth as human beings was sacrificed in the process. This is my biggest problem with Gen Urobuchi. He seems so concentrated on displaying themes that he forgets all about the characters and they turn into plot devices. This wasn't a huge issue in Fate Zero because the show had extra time to develop the characters. In Madoka Magica, that's barely the case. Though this problem is most present in Psycho Pass. Speaking of, let's move on to talk about Psycho Pass. I'm not going to lie, I really do not like this show. I suppose it's not technically a bad show, but there were just a lot of aspects within it that pissed me off. As I explained in my review of Psycho Pass, themes should be displayed through characters and their interactions. But if themes dominate all of the characters' conversations, then we have a problem. Practically every conversation in Psycho Pass is dedicated to make you think about its world, its themes, and its ideas. But why would we care about them if we don't care about the characters telling us these themes and ideas? The characters for the most part lacked any semblance of depth or likability because all they did was quote famous literature or talk about the society they lived in. Every conversation seemed to be the most important thing in the entire world, and the majority of the characters' actions seemed to be dictated by the story rather than their own morals and ethics. This is why I consider Psychopaths to be pretentious, because it shoves its themes in your face without establishing anything else. So all we have are flat characters, a pretty generic dystopian world, and a story that is completely reliant on its themes. Psychopaths was a bore to sit through, and I won't be watching the show again anytime soon. However, I have to get credit where credit is due. The relationship between Ginaza and his father was the best part of the entire show, and the only relationship that ever felt natural. The animation and the soundtrack were also really good, but we're getting off topic. Finally, we have Madoka Magica the Movie 3, Rebellion. I saved the best for last. I believe Rebellion, not Psychopaths, to be the epitome of what is right and what is wrong with Gen Rabuchi's works as a whole. Let's count them down, shall we? Characters that are only there to display themes? Check. That one character that actually develops? Check. An overly complicated story about some sort of conspiracy? Check. Black and white mentality towards its themes? Check. Fantastic looking and well executed action scenes? Check. An ending that completely contradicts the series? Wait, what? Oh, okay. If I have to give Urobuchi some credit, he's consistent and knows how to write a flowing narrative. The ending of Rebellion, however, doesn't seem like Urobuchi put a lot of thought and effort into incorporating, which is pretty strange. I've heard that he wanted to end the movie with something more logical, so I guess it's not technically his fault. Okay, let's go a little deeper with the claims that I checked off. The characters of Rebellion didn't really change or develop from their series counterparts. They remained the same with the exception of Homura, but the only reason Homura really changed was to display the theme of selfish love versus selfless love in the ending, which came straight out of left field. And the idea of selfless love versus selfish love happens to be the black and white mentality that I was speaking of earlier. This, again, highlights Urobuchi's main problem with putting themes over characters. The story was also rather standard for Urobuchi. In fact, pretty much all of his stories involve discovering some sort of conspiracy. I'm not really saying that Rebellion is bad per se, in all honesty I did enjoy watching it, but it's not something that I would hold on a pedestal and claim to be the best thing to ever exist. In the end, that's kind of how I feel about Gen Urobuchi. He's not bad, but not the greatest either. So now that we've analyzed each series, what remains the same throughout all of them? Well, there's the obvious themes over characters mentality, the themes that are presented in black and white fashion, conspiracies, great action scenes, 
and some character relationships that are genuinely interesting, such as Waver and Ryder and Ginuza and his father. This brings me to my conclusion. On the whole, I honestly think that Urobuchi is just kind of an amateur. I love the ideas and concepts that he brings up, but isn't very good at executing them properly yet. His characters talk about themes and ideas, but they don't feel very fleshed out and their personalities are practically based on those themes and ideas. I believe that Urobuchi just needs to find a balance. He certainly has talent, and he isn't a bad writer at all. I just think he needs to learn how to utilize his talent. So, do you agree? Disagree? Leave it in the comments and I'll see you guys next time.